Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ryan Mallory with SharePlanner.com. Thanks for checking out my video. Today, I want to talk about the stock market in general, the latest stocks, the hottest stocks, the ones that you should be trying to avoid, the ones you shouldn't even be even thinking about trading, and a good idea of what market analysis we have going forward with the stock market, the S&P 500 in particular, and also some of the, uh, the bigger names like Apple, Amazon, all those good guys. So let's go ahead and jump right into it with the S&P 500. You have this huge consolidation that goes all the way back to August of, of the beginning of August of this past month. For almost five weeks now, we've been consolidating. And then yesterday, we finally got the thing that we were, everybody was just hoping what we'd finally see. For me personally, I didn't mind if we broke out or broke down. It didn't matter. If we broke below this, this consolidation period and went below the 200 day moving average, great. Actually, it was a preferred direction for me because I feel like there is more profits to be had by a market breakdown than a market break out. So, we got the breakout. We break above the 50 day moving average. I was actually short when I came into the week with S and with the SPXU, which is not actually a short position, but it's an inverse ETF that gives me a three to one return of whatever the opposite direction is of the stock market. So if the market goes up, my position would go down. If it goes down, I go up. So I closed it out on Monday. Thank goodness for about a two, two and a half or on Tuesday for a 2.4% uh, profit. Good thing because the market has been rallying ever since. However, we broke above this 50 day moving average. That's big. And today we're, we're following through a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit. And that's good because that means that we're not just immediately trying to head fake the, the people who brought, bought the breakout. Now I would warn the bulls that there is a little bit of resistance overhead that you've got to be paying attention to, namely the trend line off of the December lows. If you extend it out some, you have resistance right here overhead that price did bump its head up against and sold off a little bit. Today it's rising higher. That's good. We got the follow through. However, that resistance is kind of hard because it's at a steep incline. It continues to rise higher each and every day. So it, it does make it to where the, the growth, if it can't break through, the growth of the market on a day-to-day -day basis is a bit limited. You're not going to see 30 or 40 point moves. But it doesn't keep it from going higher because as this thing climbs each day, it gives it more room for the market to rally. So if we go through like a two or three day consolidation or even a pullback of some kind, there's a lot of separation between price being able to push back up and where the resistance level of this broken trend line currently will be sitting at. So, yeah, I think we have a good chance at hitting all-time highs by the end of this month. There's very little resistance here. The Bears pretty much lost it when they gave up the 50-day moving average on yesterday's gap up. So that's something to look forward to. I think it's a bullish market at this point after we broke out of that consolidation from August. Let's take a quick look at some of these bigger names here. I'm actually long on Apple right now. It's uh, got a solid trend line going back to the June June lows. It's been bouncing off of it each and every time. And then also, too, this consolidation going back to August. The Mar Apple's actually held up pretty well throughout the course of August. It, it, it did really good. It, it actually traded higher. You can't beat that. But, yeah, it, it needs to... It needs to break out. It needs to hold this level that you're seeing right here. There's not a lot of action out of it today, but I do think that seeing 220 is a, is a very strong likelihood at this point. Facebook, I'm not really crazy about. Looking at this, you do have a broken trend line. You can see it's it's facing a little bit of resistance, kind of like what I was talking about in the S&P 500 from this old broken trend line off of the December lows. It's not really breaking above it. It tried to yesterday, but it's giving it back today. It's really stuck in this price action over the last five months, like what the S&P was. Difference is the S&P broke out of it. Facebook is still stuck in it. So I would probably avoid it for right now. Amazon, on the other hand, I really like this chart. I think you can buy it right now. I think it's a good solid trade setup. You can put a stop loss probably below uh, Wednesday's lows at around 17.95 or so. And then you can play the breakout. The breakout happened at 18.33. So I think there's I think there's a little bit of a case to be made if the market can reach its all-time highs again, that this thing could go anywhere between 19.50 and 2,000 before really seeing any real resistance kick in. Google, similar to Amazon, breaking out of that consolidation, 1300 probably so there's there's seven eight percent upside here i think before it hits any real resistance i think it's a pretty solid chart the only thing like facebook you do have some of these antitrust probes going on that creates some headline risk just like what you're seeing with facebook you see the same thing with google that's why google's down today it's why facebook's down today so i do think there's some risk going forward on a terms of in terms of headline risk that you should be aware of netflix I've been watching this one i've traded it a lot over the years a whole lot probably more than any other stock it's provided some really good returns the price action of late has been awful. I don't think I've traded it in about two months, which is kind of a record for me because I do I used to trade it quite often um, because it always provided some pretty decent trade setups, but not recently. And uh, you have this downtrend that's going on here. It's almost like a little bearish wedge, perhaps, um, that could be breaking out to the upside. Yesterday was interesting, though, because you had some bad news in terms of international uh, sales growth that, that really sold the stock off in the pre-market. It saw it go down even further at the open. 
And then all of a sudden, kind of like what you see when a market bottoms following following a huge uh, multi-week or multi-month sell-off, you had this like panic sell, and then this panic buy that came in right afterwards, and then all of a sudden you're finishing green all on the day. And that was pretty incredible for Netflix. Bad news, it finished up, which tells you that the selling was probably getting exhausted in this in this particular stock and may have some upside going forward. I may be a buyer of this going into next week. I'm not quite sure yet. I want to see maybe a little bit of uh, more bullish price action going forward. Perhaps we can break out of some of this consolidation at the 299 level and, and get back into the 300s and then perhaps be a buyer at that point. We'll see. Some trades that I'm in right now, one would be Twitter. And let me tell you, the thing's been good. I, I traded it last month for about a 2.5% profit. Not outstanding. I actually had more than that, but that got stopped out on an intraday move and it kind of stunk. I'm up right now over 6% on the trade. It looks beautiful. I am getting a little bit worried about this resistance that's forming going all the way back to 2015. Yeah, I mean, I had a kind of had to search long and hard for this resistance level, but it's there and it's um, it's a little bit worrisome because if price doesn't break through it, I think that it could see a, a, a quick pullback. So my goal here is to continue to raise uh, my my stop loss going forward. So going into Monday, I'll probably have my stop loss below today's lows just to make sure that if we do get a sharp correction, I'm not, you know, a bag holder for everybody else to jump out of. We break through it. I think 47.75 is definitely in the works. I think it could easily see a move up to that, up to those previous highs back in 2018. So there's a lot to like about this. It just needs to break this resistance right now. Told you about how I was in Apple, told you how I was in Twitter, but I also got stuffed out recently of two trades. First one being Starbucks, kind of a uh, real sore spot for me because came out with some bad guidance gapped way lower. I was actually profitable on this trade and it was looking pretty promising. I was in at $97. I wasn't really profitable, but I don't know. That was a little bit, you know, and, and so I thought it would eventually break out of this range. It started to, and then we got this nasty news piece, sold off, stopped me out, and it really hasn't done much since. So it is what it is. I kind of hate it. It doesn't look bullish to me at all now because it has all these moving averages converging right on top of price. It's probably going to weigh it down. You can see to yesterday and today it couldn't rally. So I don't like the stock anymore. That's just how fast technical analysis can change on you. Hess, I swear of all the stock sectors that I hate trading, it's energy. I've traded energy four times this year. That's it. It's it's the least amount that I do in any sector. Uh, and for good reason, because it just it's so problematic. I have my stop loss below, you know, 6348. Uh, I get stopped out of it right at the open today. Oil's weak. It just can't get any follow through. I mean, we, we're constantly head faking. And yeah, look at it this afternoon. It's trying to rebound and bounce back. I'd probably be still in it right now if, if you know, my stop loss had gotten triggered. So it's a little bit of a frustration point because, yeah, it's part of trading. But oil just in general, I mean, I really kind of like this trade because it was breaking out of consolidation. But, yeah, like I said, oil oil has just been so unpredictable of late that even when we're getting this breakout of the base, it's it's trading higher now in the day. It, it's made a, a decent recovery after being down 2%. And, you know, yeah. It comes with trading. There's some sectors that you're just not always going to do very good with. Oil has historically, like with REITs with me, not been my, my favorite sector to trade. But every once in a while, I'll give it a shot to see, okay, because I've done good with Hess in the past. Not this year. Um, I think I've traded two other times this year. One time I was up, one time I was down. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just it's just some of the frustrations that come with trading. And, um, you know, I'm not, not really thrilled about how that trade really turned out on me. So let's go ahead and talk about some of... Uh, the, the stocks are really hot on Twitter right now and on, on stock puts, the ones that people are talking about. And let's go ahead and answer some of your questions here. TNAV, TNAV, I don't know why you'd want to try to catch the dip on this thing, right? Some bad news that came out. It took a 50% haircut yesterday. And this is the reason why you have to use stop losses. Because if you have your stop loss below yesterday's lows of the day, right? Let's say you get have a stop loss at 1017. You get out of it. Look at the sell-off that happens immediately thereafter once it once it hits that stop loss. I mean, you're saving yourself 50%. Stop losses in general, it's not so much that it's best used to keep you from having a 3% loss turn into a 4% loss. It's trying to keep a 3% loss turning into a 50 or 60% loss. That's where the magic is really in the stop losses because if you're using stop losses, you saved yourself a lot of heartache right here, a huge loss on your position. And now people are going to be trying to buy this thing. They're trying, trying to buy the dip. But if you look at the five-minute chart of this thing, there's nothing There's nothing desirable about this thing. Look at this. That's a bear flag right there. There's nothing good coming out of that stock. Nothing. And so people will try to buy it. And yeah, maybe some people get lucky and maybe it does bounce. I don't know. But you're, you're really catching a falling knife. This is what you call a falling knife. People are trying to buy it. 
They gapped it up today, and then the shorts just pounced right back on it again. Bad news, headline risk, don't buy it. Pure One Imports, nice inverse head and shoulders pattern here. But again, if you wanted to get into it, get in at around $5. Don't chase it at 614, because this is what happens. Pull up the five minute chart here, you're gonna see a lot of a lot of people just getting sucked into it. They probably got sucked in right around, you know, $5.92 to $6. They get uh, popped up higher here and it keeps trending higher. And then it just sells off. And now all of a sudden you're holding the back. These things are these things are just straight up dangerous to try to chase when it's already made a 30, 35% move. When I was looking at it earlier today, it was up 38%. Now it's up 26%. So you got to take these stop losses that require like 13, 14% stops. It's just not ideal at all. Check out CrowdStrike. I don't like this one at all. 13% down. It's got a head and shoulders pattern. I'd avoid it. It's got a gap that it probably wants to fill at around at around $74. So it still has a little bit of room to go still. But you have limited price action. You have limited price history. You don't really know how high or how low this thing's willing to go. And so the only trend line I can draw is broken. The only trend line there is broken. And, and if you try to draw it on any other short-term time frames, it's broken. You have a topping pattern here. That thing's broken with the gap down today. Got you. Now going in today, DOCU, yeah, it, it, it was bearish going into today. Then it has a 21% you know, pop higher, and it's been a doji the rest of the day. So people are trying to trade this thing. They're hoping they can get in probably you know, on a, on a break on the five-minute chart, and then it goes nowhere. So what are you going to do? Are you going to hold it over the weekend? Probably not because this thing could easily trade back down in the gap. And as we know, charts like to fill their gaps. They don't like to leave big gaps open, just like this one here. Going back in June, it filled the gap before it kept trending lower. So good chance we, we pushed back into the 40s again on the stock. I know I'm sounding like a doomsdayer here on the stocks. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to say these are the stocks that catch people's attention, and it's the one that people lose the most money on because they're chasing price action. You can't do that. Check out Domo, D-O-M-O. -O. Bad earnings report down 36 37%. Don't know why you'd want to catch this falling knife, but people will do that. You don't want to be that person. Don't catch the falling knife because what I have noticed most with earnings reports in general is that you have a bad earnings report. The thing sells off. There's typically another one or two days of really bad selling that's going to happen. Probably not going to be 38% like what we're seeing today or 36%, but it's probably going to be a little bit more to the downside. So even if you're into catching falling knives, which I'm not, but if you are, you know, I'd at least wait another couple of days, let this thing settle down some. And DOMO is another reason why you just don't hold stocks through earnings because you get just disasters. And you and you look at this chart. This was some, you know, nice price action. Yeah, it's been in a dis decline trend line since March, but there was some hope here with yesterday's rally that, okay, maybe it's gonna finally break through. It's, it's popped through the 20 day moving average, the five, the 10, not super bullish, but maybe a little bit of signs of hope. It would have been enough for me to get long on and I certainly wouldn't have done it the day before or the day of an earnings report. But if you did, look at this. You're just getting creamed. Don't don't trade, don't hold stocks to, through earnings. It's just crazy. Now, VFF, look at this. There's a little bit of a bull flag here. I would wait because if you're going to trade it inside of this range, you got to put a stop loss below $10. You're almost talking like a 20% stop loss here. What are, you, what are you hoping to do? Hold it up until it gets up to $13? That's a one-to-one, -one, yeah, one-to-one -one reward to risk. I, if, it's not a favorable trade setup. Don't do it. If I'm looking to buy VFF, it's not happening right now. It's going to be happening probably down the road some. What I would do it under, conditions that I would consider trading it under, a break above the bull flag, consolidation after that, give me a little bit of wiggle, and then you get a better area that you can put a stop loss at, better reward to risk ratio going forward, and maybe you can get like three, four to one uh, return on your trade. Zoom was a huge popular stock when it did its IPO back in April. Not anymore. I mean, it doesn't matter which way. Look at all this. I've been trying to draw trend lines on this thing all day long. Can't find anything bullish about this stock. It's breaking support at $88. It's at 87 now. I think it just has further to go. I, the, I think the, there's a gap right here at 79. It needs to fill that gap. So there's prob probably another 10% of downside left in this stock, eight to 10%. So don't, don't go falling, catching falling knives. People will do it just like I keep saying in this video. People will try to catch the falling knives. Don't be that person that does it. There's so many better trade setups out there besides ZM. I'll end it on U UGAZ. The, people love this natural gas uh, ETF. They're, they're hoping that this thing finally bottoms. Go back long term. Look at this thing going back to like 2014. People have been trying to find the bottom in natural gas forever now. And it just hasn't presented itself. 
And yeah, this is a three to three to one ETF, ultra ETF on natural gas. So naturally there is a time decay to it. But this thing just five years ago was trading at 50,000 <laughs> adjusted for splits. Of course, they have to keep, you know, splitting this thing, reverse splitting to, to actually have a dollar value to it. Um, and yeah, th this thing is like rallied from 12 to 19. So you've got like a 60% pop in it already. If you're bent on trading it and yeah, it's, it's promising that it's finally broken the 50 day moving average, but you also need to be looking at the natural gas chart as well and making sure that it, you know, that there's a good setup there that would justify getting into a UGAZ. I've played OKE, which is a natural gas uh, equity stock. I made maybe like a small profit off of it. Nothing, nothing spectacular to brag about. I may, it may have even been a small loss. I think it was a profit. I'd have to go back and check, but either way, it wasn't nothing special in either direction. Guys, just be careful. Um, this this thing has this thing has gap issues. This thing could gap down against you. It's kind of like trading oil stocks. They're very difficult. They're not. There's just not been a lot of love with them in 2019. And in the case of natural gas, it's been like almost a decade. So I'd probably stay away from UGAZ. Um, I think there's still better risk rewards uh, going forward on this. But if you do want to trade it, I wait for some consolidation. This thing's made a huge move in recent days. Um, you don't want to be getting in on the tail end of a 60% run. Let it consolidate. Let it pull back some. Maybe it pulls back 30%. I don't know. But wait, wait for some for some better price and consolidation so you can establish a better reward to risk ratio on your trade because it's not there right now. That's going to do it for today. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I'd encourage you to check out the Swing Trading Splash Zone. It's my uh, premier chat room. I think it's the, the best place that a trader can be from 9.30 to 4 p.m. Eastern each day. Great community of traders. We're bouncing ideas off of each other all day long. I'm providing you my trade ideas all day long. And uh, it's, yeah, it's just, it's just really good. And I'd encourage you to check it out and see if it's a place for you. It's a free seven-day trial. You have nothing to lose. And um, I hope to see you there. Thank you. Take care. Have a good weekend. God bless. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel as well as check out some of these other cool videos that I've done. And if you want to swing trade with me each and every day, you can do so by going to www.shareplanner.com backslash splash zone. Thanks and happy trading.